you have some solid factoring skills. So how do we take these skills to the next level? That is, being able to confidently attack a mix of various factoring problems, where you have to determine what type of factoring to apply. And in some cases, maybe do two or three factoring steps within the same question. Let's first establish what you know. You know how to recognize and factor greatest common factor type problems. For example, what's the greatest common factor in this polynomial? Well, in this case, you can pull out a 3, and we see an x in every term, and a y, actually two y, so y squared, and we pull that out as the greatest common factor to the front, and we have it factored. And you can also recognize and factor difference of squares. For example, we see that the first term here is one that we can cleanly square root, that is, a perfect square. And we have a minus, that is, the difference, and another term that's also a perfect square. So we square root the first term, put them at the beginning of each bracket. We square root the second term, put that at the end of each bracket. One is positive, one is negative, and we have it factored. You also recognize and factor trinomials. For example, we have an x squared term, an x term, and a constant at the end. Now many times, there's just a one coefficient in the first term. But if not, we just call it a messy trinomial. For a clean trinomial, we think a number that adds to the middle coefficient, well, negative 1 in this case, and multiplies to the constant, negative 12 in this case, and so we think 3 and negative 4 would work. So we plug those in, and it's factored. And lastly, you can recognize and factor grouping problems. Now, often these are four terms, but not always. In a grouping problem, we don't recognize a greatest common factor, nor a difference of squares pattern, nor a trinomial pattern, but we do notice that we can pull greatest common factors out of some of the terms, not all of them. For example, in this polynomial, we notice that we can pull an x out of the first two terms and a negative 4 out of the second two terms. And when we do, we recognize that we have x plus 2y in each of these new terms. And therefore, we can pull that out to the front and we have x plus 2y times x minus 4. So we see that one of the key skills in solving mixed factoring questions is recognizing patterns. And this comes with practice, lots of practice. Given that, there is a strategy that is really helpful, and it involves the order in which you consider these different patterns. It's always best to start with the greatest common factor. That's your step one. Can you pull numbers or variables out of every term? If yes, then do that first. After the greatest common factor, we look for a pattern. Do you recognize a difference of squares or a trinomial pattern? If so, that's a great thing to attack next. Now, if you tried the above and are stuck for an idea, consider grouping. Can you pull greatest common factors out of groups of the terms? If so, try that. Do your groupings create a greatest common factor? If so, then you've got a plan. Now, one more strategy. Once you have the first step of factoring done, always look again for a chance to factor further. When you're asked to factor a polynomial, the expectation is that you factor it as much as possible. Now, this may involve just one step, but it may involve multiple steps. So when you're done, always take one more look. Can I see another pattern? Let's do an example. So we're asked to factor this polynomial. Our first step every time, think greatest common factor. And we look at it. Well, there's x's in three of the terms, but not in the last term. So that's not going to work. There's no number that's in every term. And there's y in only two terms. No, greatest common factor is not going to take us ahead. So we think, is there a difference of squares or a trinomial pattern in there? Well, difference of squares, definitely not. We know that that's two terms being subtracted for the difference, and we know the square root of each, definitely not working here. 
trinomial? Well, we start with an x to the 3, definitely not a trinomial. So let's move to grouping. And we think, well, we could pull x squared out of the first two terms, all right? And we could pull a negative 4 out of the second two terms. And that leaves us with x plus 2y in each of the new terms. Excellent. So we can pull that out to the front, and we have factored. Okay, so we're done. Or are we? Remember, always take another look for more factoring opportunities. It is factored, true. But is it fully factored? Well, let's see. We take a look at it, and we recognize that the x squared minus 4, that's a difference of squares. It's a difference, the minus in there. We know the square root of x squared, and we know the square root of 4. So we can go one more step. And so we're left with x plus 2y, x plus 2, x minus 2. And again, we think, let's check one more time. Can we factor any further? Greatest common factor, no. Difference of squares, no. Trinomial, no. No groupings, we're good. So we know that it's fully factored. And we are done.